Dive into the fascinating world of human anatomy as we explore the postnatal growth of the maxilla. In simpler terms, we're talking about the development and expansion of the upper jawbone, more commonly known as the maxilla, after birth. This might sound like a microscopic detail in the grand scheme of human growth, but it plays an integral role in several vital functions. Imagine speaking, swallowing, even maintaining the aesthetic harmony of your face. All these functions owe their smooth operation to the maxilla. It's like the unsung hero of your oral and facial anatomy, working quietly behind the scenes to support these fundamental aspects of your daily life. And it doesn't stop there. The postnatal growth of the maxilla also holds a wealth of significance to the field of orthodontics. Understanding its complexities and the mechanisms driving its growth offers invaluable insights into orthodontics and overall oral health. So, let's delve deeper and uncover the captivating journey of maxilla growth postnatally. The process of maxilla growth is a complex yet captivating one. It's like watching the intricate choreography of a ballet, where every movement is precise and purposeful. The maxilla, or upper jaw, is a vital player in this dance of growth and development. Let's delve into the captivating process of how the maxilla grows and evolves throughout our lifetime. The maxilla grows by two main processes, apposition and resorption. Apposition is the process where new bone is added. Picture it like adding bricks to a wall, layer by layer, to make it stronger and more robust. On the other hand, resorption is the process where existing bone is removed. It's like chiseling away at a sculpture to create a masterpiece. Together these two processes help shape the maxilla, giving it its unique form and function. Now, the maxilla's growth pattern is unique. It doesn't just grow bigger, it moves. As the individual grows, the maxilla moves forward and downward. It's like a ship setting sail, charting its course as it navigates the seas of growth and development. This forward and downward movement of the maxilla helps accommodate the growing teeth and the expanding nasal and oral cavities. You might be wondering, why does the maxilla move in this specific way? Well, it's all part of nature's grand design. This movement allows for the proper alignment of the teeth, ensuring a functional bite and a harmonious facial profile. It's like the pieces of a puzzle fitting perfectly together, creating a beautiful and functional whole. But the process of maxilla growth isn't just about bone. It's about the interplay of various biological factors. It's about the dance of genes and hormones, the push and pull of muscles, the interweaving of blood vessels and nerves. It's a symphony of life played out in the growth and development of the maxilla. Thus, the process of maxilla growth is a fascinating interplay of biological factors. It's a testament to the intricate and awe-inspiring complexity of human growth and development. In the next scene, we'll delve into the factors that can influence this intricate process. Stay tuned. Several factors influence the postnatal growth of the maxilla. Let's delve into these factors, which we can broadly categorize into genetic, environmental, and functional groups. First up, genetic factors. This is the genetic blueprint you inherit from your parents, which sets the stage for your maxillary growth. Your genes determine the basic size, shape, and timing of growth of your maxilla. So, if your parents have broad, well-defined maxillae, there's a good chance you do, too. But it's not just about the genes you have. It's also about how they interact with each other and the environment. This interaction, known as gene-environment interaction, can alter the course of maxilla growth, leading to variations even among individuals with similar genetic makeup. Now let's talk about environmental factors. These include nutritional status, general health, and exposure to harmful substances like tobacco smoke. For instance, malnutrition can stunt maxilla growth, while exposure to tobacco smoke during critical growth periods can lead to maxillary deficiencies. On the flip side, a well-rounded diet and good health can promote optimal maxilla growth. Finally, we have functional factors. These are related to the use of the maxilla and its surrounding structures, for example, the act of chewing and swallowing exercises the maxillary bones, stimulating growth. Similarly, proper tongue posture can influence the shape of the maxilla. 
On the other hand, habits like mouth breathing or thumb sucking can negatively affect maxilla growth. In sum, the growth of the maxilla is a complex process influenced by a rich tapestry of factors. It's not just about what's in your genes, but also about how you live, what you eat, and even how you use your mouth. Clearly, maxilla growth isn't influenced by a single factor, but rather, it's an intricate combination of various elements. Abnormal growth of the maxilla holds significant implications. It's a bit like a ripple effect, where one small anomaly can lead to a cascade of challenges. These complications can manifest in various ways, such as malocclusion, difficulty in speech, and altered facial appearance. Let's start with malocclusion. This term is a fancy way of saying that the teeth don't line up as they should. When the maxilla or upper jaw doesn't grow properly, it can lead to issues like overbite, underbite, or crossbite. These issues are not just about aesthetics. They can cause difficulties in chewing, which may affect nutrition and overall health. Moving on to the second implication, difficulty in speech. The maxilla plays a vital role in our ability to articulate sounds. If it grows abnormally, it can affect the placement of the tongue and the movement of the lips, leading to speech impediments. This can have a profound impact on a person's social interactions and self-confidence. The third implication is an altered facial appearance. The maxilla forms the middle third of the face. Any deviation in its growth can dramatically change a person's facial structure, often leading to asymmetry. This can have psychological implications affecting a person's self-esteem and social interactions. Now, orthodontic intervention can play a crucial role in managing these issues. Through various treatments, such as braces, aligners, or in some cases, surgery, orthodontists can guide the maxilla's growth, rectify malocclusions, and improve both function and appearance. To sum up, abnormal maxilla growth can lead to a domino effect of challenges. But with early detection and intervention, these challenges can be managed effectively. Orthodontics plays a pivotal role in managing maxilla growth. You see, orthodontics isn't just about straightening teeth, it's much more comprehensive. It plays an integral part in the management and correction of maxilla growth, especially when it comes to ensuring proper alignment and function of the jaw. One primary way orthodontics assists is through the use of braces. Braces are not just cosmetic, but corrective. They apply gentle, constant pressure on the teeth over time, gradually moving them into the correct position. This movement can also guide the growth and development of the maxilla in young patients, helping to avoid or correct issues like underbites or overbites. Then we have palatal expanders, another tool in the orthodontic arsenal. These devices are used to widen the upper jaw or maxilla, creating more space for teeth to align properly. Expanders can be especially beneficial in children, as their maxilla is still growing and more susceptible to changes. But it doesn't stop there. Orthodontics also employs functional appliances, which are devices designed to alter the jaw's position, promoting more favorable growth. These appliances can help to correct issues like a receding or protruding jaw, which ties back to the maxilla's growth and alignment. It's important to remember that every case is unique. The timing and method of orthodontic intervention will depend on the individual's age, the severity of their issue, and their overall health. Early intervention can often lead to more effective results, but orthodontics can still offer solutions for adults experiencing issues related to maxilla growth. Orthodontics is a powerful tool in managing maxilla growth. It can help guide this growth during the critical development stages, correct issues that may have arisen, and ultimately help individuals achieve a healthy, functional bite and a confident smile. With the right orthodontic intervention, managing maxilla growth becomes a feasible task. The postnatal growth of the maxilla is a captivating aspect of human anatomy. As we bring our discussion to a close, let's take a moment to reflect on what we've learned. We began by defining the maxilla and its postnatal growth, a process that continues well into adolescence. We then explored the various factors that influence this growth, including genetics, nutrition, and environmental factors. We also delved into the implications of abnormal maxilla growth which can lead to a range of issues, from aesthetic concerns to functional difficulties such as impaired speech or difficulty in eating. And finally, we discussed the role of orthodontics in managing maxilla growth, 
using various techniques to guide its development and correct any abnormalities. This intricate process, the postnatal growth of the maxilla, is one of many that contribute to our unique human form. As we continue to explore and understand the complexities of the human body, the postnatal growth of the maxilla remains a fascinating area of study and discussion.